A hundred years ago, physicists discovered that the properties of matter at the molecular level can be described very precisely by the equations of quantum physics. Now, perhaps the best known of these is Schrodinger's equation. Although Schrodinger's equation is easy to formulate, solving it turns out to be extremely difficult. And let me explain why with a simple example. This is the caffeine molecule. It's a small molecule with just two dozen atoms, and they're held together by just over a hundred electrons. Solving Schrodinger's equation for the caffeine molecule involves calculating a fundamental quantity called the wave function. The wave function is denoted by the Greek letter psi, and it depends upon the positions of all of the electrons in the molecule. Now, each of those positions is a point in three-dimensional space. So with just over 100 electrons, this quantity psi depends on just over 300 variables. Now, to see why that's a problem, let's imagine that we try to solve Schrodinger's equation by dividing this space up into a grid. Well, if this space had one dimension and we divided it up into a thousand points, that would be easy. If it had two dimensions and we divided each dimension into a thousand, we'd have a thousand by a thousand, that's a million grid points. Still not too bad. By the time we get to three dimensions, it's a thousand times a thousand times a thousand, that's a billion grid points, and it's starting to get pretty large. And you can see this is growing very rapidly with the dimensionality of the space. We call this exponential growth. By the time we get to a caffeine molecule with a 300 dimensional space, it's really out of reach. So that exponential growth makes it very difficult to solve Schrodinger's equation for anything other than tiny systems. Now in 1965, there was an important breakthrough made by Walter Cohn. He developed something called DFT, or density functional theory. What he showed is, we don't need to calculate the full wave function. Instead, we can work with a much simpler quantity known as the electron density. And instead of costing us exponential compute in terms of the number of electrons, density functional theory grows only cubically with the number of electrons. And in fact, today, DFT is by far the most widely used technique for calculating the properties of molecules and materials. The important thing to understand, though, is that this is not an approximation. This reduction from exponential cost to cubic cost is exact, which is an extraordinary result. In fact, it's so extraordinary that Walter Cohn won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1998 for development of DFT. But there's a huge catch. At the heart of the equations of DFT is a critical quantity called the exchange correlation functional. And that's usually written like this. Now, what Cohn showed is that the exchange correlation functional is universal, meaning it's the same functional across all molecular systems. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to write down an explicit form for the exchange correlation functional. And so for the last 60 years, many people have been developing handcrafted approximations. Now, some of these approximations have proved useful for particular kinds of molecular systems, but nobody's been able to develop something that has high accuracy and is fast and works across a broad range of different molecules and materials. So we turn to the power of deep learning. And so what we've done is to train a neural network to model the exchange correlation functional. Now, to do this, the first thing we had to do was to create a training data set. We created a data set of 100,000 examples, each of which was obtained by an accurate solution of Schrodinger's equation, which was computationally expensive and required a lot of human expertise. That data set is orders of magnitude larger than anything that people have used previously. By using that data set, combined with the power of deep learning, we were able to train the world's first deep learning exchange correlation functional that achieves high accuracy, but without sacrificing speed. This really opens the door to some very exciting possibilities to calculate the properties of materials and molecules in areas like drug discovery or new materials for green energy or many other applications.